Howdy, YouTube Nation. Draven here with my first ever video for the official launch of my channel uh, dedicated to customizing action figures. Uh, there's a lot of great customizers on YouTube. Um, definitely I'll mention some of them throughout this video when I kind of get into my influences. But um, I'd like to think I take kind of a different approach as far as action figures go. You know, I, I like obscure things. So you're not going to just see me, you know, making Captain Americas and, you know, Incredible Hulks, Batmans, things like that. Not like there's anything wrong with those, but, you know, just definitely not what I'm usually uh, usually customizing. You might ask yourself, well, you know, what's a grown-ass man doing, you know, playing with toys in his basement? So... Uh, I will give you a little bit of history on myself and why this all started. Um, as a kiddo, all up the, until now, uh, just always loved figures, loved toys. Um, just always been kind of one of those obsessive things, you know. Just uh, never really understood it much other than the fact that, you know, they're awesome and loved having them. Um, had a great mom who took care of me, um, you know. Did what she could as far as raising us, but I uh, always made sure, you know, she could uh, try to afford a, you know, a figure here or there for me because she knew how passionate I was about that. Uh, same thing with my pops, too. You know, he was out on the road a lot, and uh, I'd give him pictures of uh, what I was looking for, try to draw something out and see, you know, and kind of wait for him to get back home and uh, bring that figure. So it was always kind of a, a good thing uh, to look forward to. Um with that, love Star Wars for years. Star Wars was the big thing. You know, things came and went on TVs. I remember having, like, uh, Ghostbuster action figures and things like that. But um, the big thing was Star Wars. I do remember uh, in about third grade for Christmas, my pops uh, got me a whole set of figures. Um, you know, all the way from, you know, uh, A New Hope all the way to Jedi. Just kind of a mixture. I think there were 60 of, the, like, the original 90 that he had. So a very good find, you know, especially for so cheap. I think it was, like, $50. But um, I remember opening them, and I saw, you know, the Obi-Wan, the Luke, and the Vader from um, the original uh, New Hope set. They all had the little extensions on the lightsaber, um, which I found out uh, a little bit later in life that those were pretty rare, especially if they were carded. These ones were loose, but, um, you know, being a dumb kid, I thought, well, that's stupid, and, you know, broke all of them off, and so it was a little uh, disheartening when I had read that several years later, knowing that, hey, you know, if I would have left those alone, they probably would have been worth a lot more, but... Um, on to that later on, um, you know, uh, I remember just being a kid, um, liking certain things, like having an obscure video game. I remember I had uh, Bucky O'Hare for the Nintendo. Love that game, but um, never had seen an action figure for one before. So me loving figures like I did, I thought to myself, okay, you know, what can I do? And so I went out in, uh, in the shop, you know, my pops' shop, and I uh, found some clay and some nails. And I remember uh, sculpting all the figures the best I could, you know, out of uh, nails trying to have them with moving parts you know with clay and everything you know it didn't work out too well they kind of broke apart but um still fun nonetheless and I remember trying to make Bucky ship out of like styrofoam and sticks but um it was fun you know it was one of those things as a kid that uh, I did to kind of compensate for the lack of you know not having toys for some of these obscure things that I did like um a little bit later on, uh, I remember uh, dabbling a little bit with um, just repaints. Uh, for instance, uh, I like the SSX video game series. Uh, Elise Riggs was my favorite. Had nothing to do with the fact that she was an athletic blue-eyed blonde. <laughs> but anyway... Um, I remember beating Tricky, and uh, when you get Tricky, once you get to her final costume, you know, she's Canadian, so she has, like, this awesome Canadian costume, and I remember at uh, Hastings, I believe, if you guys uh, remember Hastings, uh, I'm not sure if they're around anymore, but um, they sold the SSX figures, and Elise was one of them. Well, she just came in her standard uniform, you know, that you saw in all the, uh, uh, you know, pictures, all of the promos for the game, all that as well, so I remember buying two, thinking, hey, you know, I can take this and repaint this uh, and make her look like she's she does at the end of the game with that special outfit and uh, I remember after doing that I was like wow this is really cool you know um but just little things here and there throughout the years you know kind of you know get a figure repaint it things like that and um kind of got out of the habit of it for a while you know I sold most of my collection um to help get my wife through grad school so I kind of went from having just like this enormous collection of figures and toys and stuff mostly Star Wars like I said and um down to nothing um I even had sold you know all of my uh Final Fantasy figures which um huge Final Fantasy fan you know 8 was the first one I played so it's the most dearest to my heart um, if you couldn't tell from the ink, you know, I'm working on a sleeve with all the characters, but, uh, I know there's all you seven lovers out there. Seven was great, but you know, eight was my first and they say there's nothing like your first. So, um, had all the figures there, all the guardian forces, you know, uh, the, the small figures that Bandai made, um, 
all that as well. But, you know, I'll move those all along, you know, to basically help um, kind of with, you know, our future as a family. Um, so got my wife through grad school, you know, had kiddos. We got ourselves, thankfully, uh, in a very good position, very blessed to be where we're at now. Um, and started just kind of watching YouTube one day. And I came across a customizer uh, named Craig Warwick. If you've never seen any of Craig's videos before, I definitely recommend to check them out. Um, definitely my biggest influence as to why I have actually gotten into this as in depth as I have. I remember I saw one of his videos um, and I spent the rest of the day just watching them because he's just so amazing at what he did. Um, that later led me on um, to find videos. Um, another one of my favorite customizers is Greg. Uh, I believe uh, Spawn Sauce was the name of his channel. I think he's alternate head now, but um, does amazing work with fabric. Uh, I've worked with fabric. I started out with a few of my figures with fabric. Um, definitely nowhere near on the level he is. So definitely check out some of his videos as well, because just the way that he paints it and works with it with, you know, fabric glue, uh, normal glue paint, quite impressive. So it's definitely something I'm looking forward to try to get better at in the future. Um, another customizer, um, God rest his soul, Glenn Webb, um, guy was so passionate about figures and uh, mostly did reviews, but some customizing of his own. So one thing kind of led to another. And I uh, remember thinking, wow, you know, this is something that I think I could do. So um, being kind of on a tighter budget, you know, having kiddos and whatnot, I thought, okay, where can I start? So first thing I did is I went to the flea market, found just a bunch of old figures and just started, you know, messing around with those, seeing what I could do with them, um, which kind of led me to where I'm at now. Um, what I wanted to do was start with uh, figures with less articulation, um, you know, more or less kind of like the old Jax figures, some of the early WWE figures. Um, also as well, those are a lot easier to find in my experience at the flea market than, uh, you know, there's some of the newer ones like the NECA figures or Marvel Legends or anything of that sort. But definitely started getting, you know, a good feel for it. And a um, few of the videos that Craig had mentioned he did, uh, The Secret Santa, in um the, at the website called the Fwoosh. Um so I looked into that, looked how to, you know, how to get into that, how to get involved with that, and um did my very first event it was actually a summer event um where I ended up making a scorpion figure. So I still used the WWE figure but used one of the elite figures at that point um because I had a little more articulation. I wanted, you know, not to give my recipient something that you know only bent in three, four ways and um I, I was really, really happy with how it turned out. I put a lot of effort into it, a lot of time, and learned a lot with it as well. So uh, There is a video, actually, a video review of that figure, so um, hopefully I can post a link to that below. Uh, you guys can check that out as well. But um, what to expect from the channel, um, very, very busy. You know, I actually usually only have about three days a week to customize. What I'm hoping to do is do uh, several reviews of figures I've already made so you guys can kind of see where I started, where I'm at now, and where we're going in the future. So um, I want to do a lot of breakdown videos on, you know, how do you cut down the joints to keep from paint rubbing after you paint your figures. Obviously, the figures come new, the joints are tight, you paint them, and then you bend them, and all that hard work is gone because the paint rubs off. So probably my least favorite part of customizing is definitely doing that part, but at the time to uh, make the figure right before you actually start sculpting and painting. So uh, I want to do um, some breakdown videos, like I said, on that, but also um, I want to do a series on how to customize on a budget. You know, there's a lot of great products, great paints out there that you can get, but, um, you know, sometimes we can't afford that. So I've kind of found ways around that, you know, uh, what kind of paints can you use um, to make things better? You know, I actually really influenced uh, something I took really hard, uh, to heart. I'm a big fan of the Crow series, if you couldn't tell by the name. Um, James O'Barr was doing, uh, it was one of the special features on one of the releases they did of the Crow, um, and he was talking about how when he was actually making the comic and doing a lot of the paintings, which you can see the paintings if you look at the graphic novel, um, they definitely have them throughout there. And I believe he said that he bought his paint at Kmart because that's what he could afford, and he made it work, and they're amazing, you know, so... Um, 
while there are great paints out there and a lot of times you get what you pay for, um, you can make things work to your advantage too. So I'm really hoping to kind of do some videos like that. And, um, you know, a little few videos at the flea market, you know, me shopping around. You guys can hear my terrible Spanish. I uh, get by though. So with that too, a lot of work in progress picks I'd like to do, um, being that I do the, uh, mentioned the floosh earlier. I am involved every year in the summer swap as well as the secret Santa. Uh, looks like I'm actually going to be running the summer swap next year, which is going to be awesome. So, um, Mixie's stepping down for a year. So I'm going to uh, take over for him and, you know, whenever he decides he wants to step back up, we'll gladly hand the reins back over, but it's going to be fun. You know, it's going to be fun to kind of experience that and organizing and getting lists out and everything. But, uh, if you're not familiar how the process works, it's basically, you know, you make a list, you submit your list, you get somebody else's list, you make one figure, and then uh, you ship that figure at the deadline uh, once it's completed. And then your recipient gets their figure, you get your figure, and everybody's happy. There's much rejoicing. Yay! Um, but with that... Um, we're not obviously able to, per the rules of the website, you know, we're not able to actually reveal any photos or anything until the reveals are done. So what I'll be doing is making those videos as we go and then doing just a final uh, video review once that's uh, revealed on the website. And then you can come to the channel and watch, you know, the process of uh, reading through the list and uh, which figure I chose, which figure, base figure I chose, parts and pieces, that here and there, what basically made it all come together. It's uh, quite a fun experience. You know, I love watching Craig's videos every year I look forward to it every year you know almost more than Christmas but um we say that I get struck by lightning here <laughs> but anyway uh, I'm hoping I can share that with you all as well that you enjoy many many thank yous for watching I do appreciate it so uh, we'll have some fun in the future I have a tendency to cuss like a sailor so, so I might have to do a little bit of editing but um we'll get there we'll make it uh, as PG as possible so until then appreciate y'all take care